headlines we are tracking for you this evening. Global product lifecycle management platform Servify secured $65 million as part of its ongoing Series D funding round led by Singularity Growth Opportunity Fund. In addition, several strategic investors like Amtrust, family offices like that of Pidilite and existing investors including Iron Pillar, Bnex, Bloom Ventures and DMI Sparkle Fund participated in the round. To talk about the road ahead at Servify, joining me now is its founder Srivats Prabhakar. Srivats, welcome back to Startup Street. If you could take me through the fund allocation plans, you plan to further grow the business in international markets and of course trend in the technology platform. So what new offerings are in the pipeline that support brands and consumers during this product usage, be it damage protection, extended warranty or trade-in and upgrade? Thanks, Shruti. Uh, good to be back here. Uh, obviously, I think uh, what we are trying to do uh, with the latest funding is obviously getting into new markets. Uh, because some of our partner brands, they want us to get into new markets like LATAM, Japan, etc. So obviously, some part of the funding will go there in establishing businesses because when we start a new business in a new market, almost for 12 to 15 months, uh, we can't make revenues because we need to get the compliances, get all the integrations, etc. So making our product uh, ready for the market. So I think uh, we will use some of them uh, for international expansion. Obviously, also from a technology uh, uh, evolution, we want to really get into a space uh, something called a Servify Care, which is uh, in the works for a while, where uh, you know currently as a consumer, you are buying a plan for your TV, your phone separately, your laptop separately, and it could be of different brands. Uh, we want to get an, uh, get an umbrella program, which we actually launched uh, uh, about a few weeks ago in the US already uh, with one of the internet service providers. But we want to invest in really getting that umbrella program called Servify Care, which can encompass a Samsung Care and an Apple Care and an LG Care together so as a consumer, you have one single touch point, irrespective of the number of gadgets or products you have at home, okay. but you have one single window. So that's where we will invest a little more money. And obviously the rest will be to build new capabilities like the buy now, pay later aggregation or mm -hmm. also some money uh, for uh, uh, hopefully no more COVID-like situation, but we want to be well capitalized. Yes. If at all, there is ever, ever a situation like that. So Absolutely. that's the location. Okay, in fact, recently Servify extended its platform to enable affordable product purchases such as no-cost EMI, instant discounts, and I believe you're also looking to scale this offering with the raised capital. Give us a sense of the opportunity here. Sure. So, if you look at just India as a market, hmm. about $70 billion of electronics is sold. So, I'm just talking about electronics and India as a region. Uh, out of that, approximately about 22 to 24% of the products are sold on sponsored affordability, which means no cost EMI, instant discount, cashback, all of these offers, which are sponsored by either the brand or by the retailer or by the bank. So uh, our belief is uh, that large opportunity is still uh, paper process driven or no consistent experience for the consumer. Think of it if you walk into a outlet like a Chroma, you have an option to go to lender one if the process is not approved or you're not eligible then you go to a lender two lender three lender four or if you are a card user you go to one terminal and probably eligibility checks happen on another terminal so our belief is to uh, get all of them under one common unified platform for a consumer because we are already present in those outlets with our after sales services which is device protection and exchange offering and it's anyway sponsored by the oem or by the retail why not bring all of them under one unified capability and also bring that digital experience for the consumer? And that's what we are trying. So as we speak, we are running a pilot in about 192, 194 odd stores uh, across different markets, learning a lot. Obviously, uh, not that we are doing the best probably yet because it's still a pi pilot. But I think uh, the idea is to run similar pilots in different markets, different okay. product categories for another three, four months and then scale it further. Uh, obviously, we want to build uh, uh, a lot of uh, capabilities in terms of uh, unifying customer journey, getting mm, the mm. access to a larger credit base. For example, unfortunately, all of this sponsor uh, affordability is yet targeted at probably 15 million credit card customers or at best 300, 350 million PAN card users. But in India, you have 1.3 billion people, about billion people who do not have uh, a credit card or a PAN card. Are you saying they are not credit worthy or yes. frauds? No, yes. they're not. You need to find ways and means to include them. So I think our endeavor is to really bring that inclusion okay. and work looking at consumer uh, first rather than uh, you know risk first approach. So I think okay. that's exactly what we will launch. Obviously, it's still in the works and I can't talk too much in okay. public domain. All but, right. uh, that's, uh, that's our endeavor.
All right, lo lo lots of pilots in the works. Uh, Shrivats, you know, you currently have an annual revenue run rate of over $130 million. How soon are you looking to turn profitable? Also, if you could take me through the revenue model. Sure, sure. So, uh, like I said, as of now, we have two business models. One hmm. is the warranty, extended warranty and damage protection. Second is the exchange and upgrade uh, uh, offering. Uh, first is a complete end-to-end -end, uh, experience that we manage where we accept the GMV. Uh, we sell our services to an OEM who then bundles it as their service consumer. So our, our model is almost like you can think of this in the hardware world. Maybe we are the Foxconn for an Apple, right? So, okay. Or an Samsung. So our services are then uh, uh, bundled by the OEM, sold to the retail channel, and retailer sells it to the consumer. Hmm. So that's uh, one uh, offering. Second exchange is more of a fee business. Again, we have a platform, we have a bidding platform, we have liquidators hooking onto our uh, platform. So the price is discovered real time and diagnostics and all those capabilities we've built with deep integration with the OEM, we are able to get both age and health of the product uh, ac okay. accurate, which then helps to determine the right price and whoever bids the best price, that's passed on to the consumer. And we charge a fee for that transaction. So that's our fee business. And obviously with the uh, affordability, again, it's going to be a fee business. Okay. So overall, as we speak, uh, out of the $130 million, predominantly uh, about 85 to 90%, 88% probably comes from the warranty business and rest from the exchange and upgrade. Uh, but again, uh, that's as we speak. Uh, we expect this year to uh, close uh, with about 150 uh, plus million dollars of uh, revenue. Okay. And in terms of profitability, we are actually profitable in different geographies individually, but at hmm. a global basis, at company level, hmm. we'll be profitable from, hopefully from uh, October, November onwards. Okay. I mean, as of now, the numbers that we are seeing, hmm. we may actually turn profitable next month itself, but okay. as per budget, it's still November, November December. Well, she was. This, uh, this month has been. Uh, one of our best months in the history again okay. almost touching 100 uh, she, she was that that's really good to hear but we've completely run out of time wish you the very best with all your future plans and growth plans many thanks for joining us on the show today so much have a good day bye-bye thanks for hosting me bye-bye and from one fundraise to another a fast-growing digital platforms for sexual wellness women's wellness and mental wellness Mojo Care recently raised $20.6 million in a Series A round. The startup, which was founded in 2021 by Ashwin Swaminathan and Rajat Gupta, has seen 60 times growth in its user base since its launch. Joining us today on the show is Ashwin Swaminathan, the co-founder of Mojo Care, to elaborate on the company's expansion plan and growth outlook. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Like I said, you're a digital platform for sexual wellness, women's wellness, mental wellness and hair loss. Can you take us through how you provide a personalized care delivery system and assist users across in managing chronic and lifestyle-driven illnesses? Absolutely. So thanks, Arindati. Thanks, Shruti, for having me on the show. Um, firstly, you know, what's important to understand with respect to specialty wellness is that these are problems that affect people in very different ways. These are multivariate problems. Two people having the same premature ejaculation issue could manifest it in very different ways. And there is a personalized care delivery system which we have designed in order to offer the best outcomes for each and every user. On the solution side, right, we have a combination of consultation and therapy. We have awareness creation about the right kind of diet and lifestyle, access to authentic medications to treat these conditions. Because if you look at it today, more than 70% of medications in specialty wellness available in the Indian market is counterfeit. And most importantly, in order to unlock such a latent market, handholding and a distribution first approach is required to treat the problems in a holistic manner. So this is how we define the Mojo Care model as a full stack personalized and a user centric clinic. And we provide all of the above in a format that is very easy for the user to consume and control every single aspect of the experience, Absolutely. thereby delivering better outcomes. And we're going yeah. to discuss each of your products and services in detail in a bit. But let's talk about the fundraise. You've raised $20.6 million. What's the fund allocation plan? Where's the money going? So see, while we've raised a decently large round, the goal is not to splurge it. We do not believe in a high burn blitz scale model. And the reason why we are taking a distribution first approach is not only to unlock the latent market, but also to kind of build an enduring company that has a sustainable economic engine, right? And while your top line grows exponentially, the bottom line won't be in the red eternally. So the biggest avenues of investment for us will be building a rockstar team across the art, product, tech, marketing, clinical ops, user experience, logistics, new product development, et cetera. And while we talk a lot about going digital first and distribution first, the 
mobile app is a great unifier of GTMs in providing a care experience that is unified across all the different channels that we have. And it will take a few million dollars and a few quarters to get that user experience right before accelerating the pedal on top of the funnel. So that's what uh, you know the funding deployment plan is going to look like. All right. Uh, why don't you take us, you, you've told us a little bit about your products and services. Take us through that. Take us through what you have in the pipeline as well. Anything new you're looking at? So not really, right? We've picked certain spaces and we right. want to remain focused on specialty wellness, men's sexual wellness, women's wellness and fertility, mental wellness, hair and skin care, obesity management. These are problems that are plaguing half a billion Indians today and 750 to 800 million people across Southeast Asia and India. And, you know, the user experience is extremely chaotic. So for us, from awareness to access, discovery to care delivery and digital monitoring, the goal is to provide a full stack user centric care delivery system to every Indian and then go global. The focus will be very strictly on specialty wellness. Right. So the focus is on specialty wellness. Now, within 12 months of your launch, you claim to have registered 45 times growth in your paid subscriber base and delivered care to users across 50 percent of India's pin codes. So what's the current subscriber base and what percentage of these are paid subscribers? See, you know, uh, this distribution first approach does not mean that we have a ton of users on the top of the funnel whom we are not able to monetize, right? We have credible clinical content. We have free consultation and access to experts and proprietary distribution channels. And all of these, because of the nature of the experience and the trust that we've managed to create, has double digit conversion and hundreds of thousands of paid active users. Today, we are doing about 3000 free consultations a day and double digit percentage of those users are converting into paid subscribers. All right. And you're present across a whole host of verticals, like you said. So with both products and services. So where are you seeing the most amount of traction? What's the best performing vertical for you? Sexual wellness, without a doubt. The market right. is so deep and latent. And that's what the fulcrum positioning of the business is going to be for the next 18 odd months. So sexual wellness is where the focus is. Take us through your current revenues. Where will you close this year? So, you know, I'm not in a position to disclose the exact revenue numbers, but we should be in early to mid double digit revenue uh, run rate. And uh, this is coming, this, this blitz scaling has come with a fairly sustainable economic engine and we should be CM2 profitable. All right. And why don't you take us through your omni-channel go-to-market strategy? What's your offline pres presence like and what's the revenue mix? What are you going to focus on? So today, more than 80-85% of our revenue comes from digital channels. Right. But the goal is to create an omni-channel experience eventually. Because if you look at the likes of a Lenscart or a First Cry or a Mama, all of these big startups, consumer tech or health and wellness startups, have had to go offline not only to reach out to a broader market, but also to create a touch and feel and trustworthy experience in a very high touch category, right? So we are working with a bunch of chemists, doctors, and pharmacies and seeing how we can create an experience that is much more differentiated than the average pharmaceutical companies. In, any, in many ways, right, we're bridging together the entire supply chain. Chemist, doctor, and pharmaceutical company, all three is... Mojo care for the end user. And how do we bring that experience online or to the nearby chemist store or to the nearby clinic? That's the end goal. All right, so bridging that gap essentially. Now, affordability has been one of the biggest issues with regard to healthcare. How are you leveraging technology to make your services affordable and accessible, especially to tier two and three cities? Yeah, absolutely. Tier 2, Tier 3 awareness and access has been a big problem, right? And because we do not have enough doctors in these spaces, not only are we creating a curated set of doctors who are trained by our medical experts, but we're also collecting a bunch of data across hundreds of thousands of our paid subscribers, as well as millions of our non-paid subscribers. And each one of these data points is going on to create a superior AI engine that will be able to identify symptoms, present diagnosis in an automated manner that can scale, right? So the Care experience layer, adding doctors is not really going to be linear. It's going to be fairly non-linear. All right. All right, Ashwin, thank you so much for joining us on the show and we wish you all the best going forward. Thanks, Shruti. Thanks, Arundhati. On that note, it is time for us to slip into a quick break. But coming up next, we decode the early stage investor from firm Unicorn India Ventures' exit strategy. More details on the other side. Stay tuned. <laughs> 